what did I say? One minute for each. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll see how I do. <laughs> I'm kidding. You, you get the three just like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Glenn Carroll, I'm coordinator of Nuclear Watch South. We have gotten 15,000 members since Vogel was announced and construction started. So we've gotten a lot of national attention to Georgia Power and Vogel as nuclear is having a legendary bad year. And it's concerning because it does isolate Georgia Power. It's having procurement issues with um, Vogel, and as it becomes the only, you know, one of the very few reactors being built in the country, it costs are going to go up for parts. So um, I want to appreciate Sierra Club, Georgia Watch, Southern Alliance for Clean Energy, and the others that are intervening in the integrated resource plan, and want to just weigh in a little bit on that. It's great, um, it's been great to see PSC presence at the cost overruns hearings in the legislature. Really great to be reading about the potential for a mandate for Georgia Power in the news, and I really want to encourage you to do that. Um, I'm concerned about the two megawatt limit for uh, third party solar leasing, and don't see any reason to have that cap except to be an advantage to Georgia Power that doesn't seem fair. Uh, I wanted to tell you that I have a blog on the WAND website called Georgia Power and a Nuclear Jam, so you can Google it and look that up. The world has changed really, really fast and Georgia Power is being isolated. It is protected financially, of course, because of the small business and residential customers who are covering all of the risk that they are taking, but you are in a position to do something about that. We want solar power here, not in Arizona and New Mexico. So, um, because of all the attention that Georgia is getting nationally, a pal of mine, who is Deputy Director of Power Systems in Port Angeles, Washington, his name is Philip Lusk, sent me a little something I want to share with you. First of all, he crunched $14 billion, which of course is an old price estimate for Vogel, and said using 2012 cost of photovoltaic panels, we could install about five times the power that can be expected from one reactor at Vogel. But by 2016, given the trend of falling cost, it's going to be more like 12 and a half times the power of one AP1000 reactor. So that's pretty favorable. And I don't think we're here today to stop plant Vogel, but surely we can do solar and that'll help Georgia Power out. If it gets to the point where it really cannot pursue Vogel, if it's getting solar into the grid, it's gonna be in a better position when it comes time to make that tough decision. So he also sent his recipe, and I can't say that I understand it probably as well as you will, but he said it's scalable, and because um, Port Angeles is obviously a lot smaller than Georgia. But what they are doing there is they're using conservation and efficiency to hold the average load growth to 15 to 25% of what had been expected to be needed. So they're using conservation and efficiency to trim the need. And they're having great results. Their annual load growth has been 1%. Then they use the conservation and efficiency to bring the growth rate down to 0.15%. They are meeting this objective and it is embodied in the regional power plan. Then they're using demand response and energy storage to flatten the peaks to more of a straight line. Then when they've accomplished that, they offset the balance of new load growth replace existing capacity with photovoltaics and wind, 
go back, work the demand response and storage plan, and flatten the remaining peaks. So um, I hope that's helpful. Thank you again. Um, love reading the news about how um, highly educated you've become on solar and how you're spreading the word around so people like me are understanding a lot better. Are you, are you a George Power customer? Yes, sir. Are you on time of use rate? I am not. But I do not have air conditioning, and I have just installed a clothesline. No, I'm just saying. And I'm like paying $35 a month. In your recipe, the flattening of the peaks is time, you convert over to time of use. You, you know, I just, somebody I'm, handed, I'm on time of use. So. Yeah, somebody handed me uh, that plan, and that looks really cool. And um, what it gets you to do, as I understand it, is you become more aware of what yes. time of day you're using electricity, and you get charged less if you're careful. You do, you, yeah, just for anybody in the room, your, your rate goes up at peak between two and seven, but it drops dramatically outside that peak, so it incentivizes you to uh, change your load patterns and it helps the overall grid. So. Right. Uh, Elkie 